Ahmed Shahidov, a human rights defender and the head of the Azerbaijan Institute for Democracy and Human Rights, discussed the ongoing situation in the Nagorno-Karabakh region. Tensions on the Armenian-Azerbaijani contact line escalated again on, on Sunday and the Armenian side shelling of Azerbaijani civilian villages in the morning led to no large-scale military operations in the region. And there are killed and wounded among the civilian population due to the intensive shelling by the Armenian side. Uh, the Armenian military units uh, caused severe damage to uh, civilian infrastructure as well and uh, units of the Azerbaijan army are fighting for essential heights located under Armenian troops' occupation in the Tartar, Agdam, uh, Fizuli, Jabrail directions and the direction of uh, Murovdag mountain. And in response, the Azerbaijan army launched large-scale military operations and uh, intensive fighting took place in all directions of the front line. And right now, tensions remain uh, on the front. And President of Azerbaijan Ilham Aliyev uh, yesterday called on the uh, country security council and said it is time to liberate the occupied territories. And today intensive fighting is taking place and the uh, uh, Azerbaijan army yesterday has liberated seven villages and the strategic height named uh, Murovdag, which is very important for uh, Azerbaijan side. And there are losses in both sides as well. The Armenian side stated that yesterday uh, 23 soldiers were killed uh, and 100 uh, were injured and today Armenian side uh, again stated that uh, about 26 uh, soldiers were killed and but the Azerbaijan side has not yet released exact information about the losses of Azerbaijan side. However, a large number of uh, heavy equipment and tanks belonging to Armenia were destroyed and Several Armenian military units uh, were uh, neutralized. Uh, a state of war has been declared in both Armenia and Azerbaijan today, and uh, w which gives reason to believe that this war will continue. Uh, Azerbaijan imposes a, a very a strong restriction on internet access in the country, which uh, prevents the dissemination of military information on uh, social networks and internet sites. And uh, many international organizations and countries are calling for an end to this uh, tension between Armenia and Azerbaijan and the start of peace talks. However, it seems that the opportunities for a peaceful solution uh, to this conflict have been exhausted already because for the last 30 years Azerbaijan has always been a supporter of peace. And there are four resolutions of the UN Security Council which support the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan and decisions of the OEC, the Council of Europe and other international organizations on the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan are not being implemented yet and Armenia does not comply with international law and uh, norms. And in recent months, the Armenian uh, side's use of various provocations on the state border and on the front line has once again shown that uh, official year one is not ready for peace talks today. And Azerbaijan is determined to liberate its lands from occupation and international law is on Azerbaijan's side in this matter. I think that if uh, Azerbaijan managed to liberate seven villages uh, in one day, in the next week Azerbaijan uh, will be able to achieve significant change in the settlement of uh, the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. And for today, the military uh, political leadership of the aggressor Armenia continues to strike at the uh, civilian population, numerous houses and civilian objects, as well as at uh, household premises, grossly violating its uh, applications uh, under the Geneva Conventions. The Armenian uh, uh, army targets uh, densely populated areas, uh, regional and rural centers, civil infrastructure objects, a hospital, medical centers, school buildings, and uh, kindergartens. And by now, uh, 26 uh, civilians in total have been hospital hospitalized with various injuries. Uh, since the morning of September 28, the Armenian armed forces have been intensively shelling the Azerbaijani city of Tartar, an enemy 
forces are purposefully targeting civilians and facilities uh, in their city. And responding uh, to the new act of aggression by Armenia, the Azerbaijan armed forces carrying out uh, counter-offensive measures declare that uh, they uh, do not wage war against civilians, women and uh, children, uh, counter-attacks within the framework of international humanitarian law. And the actions of the Armenian side are contrary to international law today and demonstrate that the country use all means, including war crimes, to achieve uh, new plans of aggression. And uh, as a human rights uh, defender, we call on the international community to uh, resolutely condemn the war crimes that uh, purposefully target uh, Armenian uh, civilians. Uh, at the end, I want to underline the very important issue today. According to intelligence, there are many uh, mercenaries of uh, Armenian origin from Syria and various Middle East countries uh, among the uh, casualties of the enemy. However, since uh, they are not officially registered in Armenia, the uh, Armenian side easily uh, hides uh, these losses and we have uh, some information that the uh, PKK uh, militants uh, and the terrorists uh, are moving to Nagorno-Karabakh and other occupied territories of, of Azerbaijan to fight against uh, Azerbaijan army. And now the uh, uh, intensive fighting on Nagorno-Karabakh on front line are going on and we will uh, try to uh, update information uh, regularly. The Nagorno-Karabakh conflict has been raging for decades, but what's the history behind this conflict and what led to where we are today? Let's take a look.